There are some villains we love, and some we hate, and some we hate to love, and some we love to hate. Some are cool, and some are not. Some seem invincible, and others a waste of time. What makes a villain something that your PCs will take seriously and will talk about for years to come? All good villains need a lair, and all lairs need a good villain. So why not make the best lair you can using this week's sponsor, Dungeon Fog. It's the ultimate in battle map map making software. Get a discount at the end of the video. I promise you, your villain will love it. So what makes a cool bad guy or a bad girl or gal? Uh, I don't know what bad guy, bad girl. Anyway, my name is Guy and you are watching how to be a uh, uh, how to how to forget how to do the opening to your own show. How to be a great GM. And today, today I'm t going to help you. I'm no, I'm not really going to help you. I'm going to try to talk about how to make your villain the best villain possible. At least, I mean, that's that's what I hope to do. Um, so yeah. Anyway, before we go much further, it's important to remember that villains are inherently doing the wrong thing. Darth Vader, Sauron, Ultron, Wily e. Coyote, uh, Captain Hook, they were all evil people. How they got to their position is irrelevant in terms of their current actions. They will hurt, murder, betray and ignore the law and justice to get what they want. So just bear that in mind. Um, now, uh, on that, there are three types of evil, two of which are useful for us in terms of, of absolute villains and one which is incredibly powerful as a long-term NPC but it's very difficult to pull off. So we're going to talk about that firstly. So, right, first let's clear up some titles. Now, the way I see it, in a campaign game, there are four grades of villains. Knowing which one you're using will help you save prep time and effort, so it's important to know, uh, to know them. All right, so what the different the four different types are. Now, use these names, or well, whatever names you like. Uh, this is just the names that I use. The Nemesis, the ultimate bad guy, the campaign ending badass, the nemesis, the villain, a couple of adventures worth of evil. That's pretty much all they've got. They're powerful, they're scary, but they're not the biggest badass. They're the second biggest. The henchmen, these are single adventure use only minor badasses. And then the goons, these are combat worth, one or two combat worth badasses they're little badasses they're demi mini badasses so anyway the, the the nemesis hires a villain or villains to do their work the villains do that because they hope to eventually overthrow the nemesis or gain power by working for the nemesis or replace the nemesis that's what they that's why they get hired by the nemesis the villains then hire or send out henchmen and the henchmen then basically hire goons to go and do the henchmen's work so that's kind of the flow nemesis villain Henchman, goon. Now, goons very seldom need a backstory. Give them a quirk, a speech thing, something that makes them stand out a little bit. But they're not going to last for long. They're there for the encounter, maybe two, if you want a heroic goon. The henchman will be the biggest problem that the PCs face in that adventure. So within the adventure, the henchman is there. Give them a quirk or three, some cool descriptions, a solid idea of what you want and what they what you want them to do and what they want to do, and you're, you're golden. The villain is going to be around for a while, and technically if you're running a campaign using the guidelines that we use in this channel, you'll want to have about three or four villains. No, no, no more than that. Basically, it's one for each act. Or, or section of your of your campaign. Now, these do need to have backstories. They should have full traits and quirks. They should have dreams and goals and all those kinds of wonderful things. And then, of course, the nemesis should be the most rounded NPC that you put together. Focus all your creative energy into making them come alive. Well, so how do we do that? How do we make our nemesis seem real and cool and plausible and, and, and fun? Well, first, we need to identify the, the type of bad person that they are. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, I spoke about there's three different types of, of, of evil. Well, these, these then are them. So the first one is easy. It's the crazy, power-hungry psychopath. The one who wants it all. They know they're evil. They're very one-dimensional. They, 
They are just really good at being the big bad and everyone wants to kill them because they're super powerful and they are, are very clear in their approach. You can use this nemesis when you want to give the players someone to beat up and defeat. Okay, so they're just really, really powerful. The second is very complex because they are a nemesis who believes that they're doing it for the good of the people. This is the man who kills a million people because it will, it will benefit 10 million people. Kill a million to save 10 million. It's a tough to choice, but they will make it. So these people forget about the ideals of personal value and they see the bigger picture kind of stuff. And so these are the most common types of nemesis um, as, as very few of them see themselves as completely nuts and evil. So use this villain when you want to show your players that there's more to your world than just black and white. Um, they'll still beat the nemesis in the end, but that victory will come at some kind of cost. So this greater good nemesis is often blinded. It's like, no, we'll kill them all because it will save more. They don't look for alternatives. Um, and neither of them can be redeemed, by the way. They embody their way of life. They're not going to give it up. They're not going to suddenly change their mind. You go, oh, well, no, actually, we should look for alternatives. No, no, no. But that's where the third type comes in. And the third one is the one that we can actually learn to love. That's the lost evil. These are soldiers or warriors or fighters who lost themselves for some reason. They forgot that they were inherently good once or it got beaten from them until they, they gave up but they can be redeemed. They can be saved and brought back into the light. It won't be easy. It won't be without cost, but they can be redeemed. Now, this nemesis is beaten, but is never broken, okay? They, they, get, they rediscover their right and just path because of the actions of the PC. That's the critical part. The PCs have to be involved in redeeming them. Darth Vader, classic example. True evil got saved. So, choosing which one uh, you want to use is a question of how clear you want your game to be. I would always suggest for novice players that if this is your first kind of campaign, do a psychopathic nemesis. The one that's just big and bad and evil, and you don't have to get bogged down in why and what motivates them and why do they do it. They are evil because they want power and they want everyone to worship them. Run a campaign like that, run two or three, and then you can then step up to, to the next one, which is the greater good nemesis, the one who's, who's trying to change the universe for the better by killing half of the universe. That kind of complex kind of character. You know, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a tricky one to play because uh, if the players start to agree with the nemesis, you have a problem where your nemesis is now becoming the player's hero and you don't want that. So you must make sure that whatever they're proposing, there is an alternative, but they refuse to see it. They blind to seeing it. So kill a thousand elves to save a million hobbits. There are alternatives. Why don't we save them both and do something else? Anyway, so I would do that, run the couple of games like that, and then move on to the salvation nemesis, the one who's lost their way and that they, they're going to get found and brought back into the light. Those are much more personal stories because usually there's a connection that you want to have, a, a very complicated journey between the PCs and this this master nemesis before they, you know, they, they try to redeem him, they try to find uh, what she needs in order to be put back together so that she's no longer um, broken and, and, and evil. So working out how your nemesis is going to operate is a function of the sentence, obviously. So how are they going to work their master plan? Someone wants something badly by a specific time and is having difficulty getting it using something because a force is stopping it. Now that force is usually the PCs. Um, so they're going to figure out what villains they need to do their bidding, right? So they're going to go, all right, well, I need this villain and I need that villain and I need that villain. They're going to need a team of people. Just accept it. They're going to need a team of people. So use the sentence of the nemesis to give you guidance on how the nemesis will approach the PCs. Um, so that's that's important. Um, oh, I'd be remiss. I would be remiss. I don't have that word remiss. If I didn't also mention the different managerial styles of the nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a thing, right? It's a thing. So you have the mastermind nemesis. Mm, the mastermind. Now, the mastermind is seldom directly engaged with the PCs, but they are directly engaged with the PCs by sending villains to do that sort of stuff. The PCs learn of the mastermind via the villains, uh, but they can't really ever attack the mastermind directly because there's too many villains in the way or or they're protected too, too much by the law. Um, Adolf Hitler, classic mastermind psycho nemesis. Uh, the PCs have to fight his generals and his soldiers first 
so his henchmen and his his uh, villains before they can get to him but they 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 know that he's there they know that he's 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 a force the other type i have is the ne never present nemesis now these are intangible and they can't really be defeated it's more like they're an an idea or an organization so once the villains are defeated the never present nemesis is sent into limbo for a while but will return hydra from the Marvel uh, series, for example. That's an evil organization that seems to have no single leader but throws out villains all the time. It can be tricky to present to your players because an ever-present nemesis, when the players win, they don't actually win. So sometimes it can feel a little bit empty. You have to make sure that the villain then becomes super powerful and super, super evil. And then you get the traitor nemesis, which is the one who starts by working with the party and then they betray the party. So they could be friends, they could be mentors, they could be guides, whatever whatever you want to, to do there. But um, it must be done very, very carefully. Now, Emperor Palpatine from the Star Wars, primarily from the Clone Wars uh, period, he was in this space. He was working with the Jedi and he was working with the Republic until eventually, finally, he revealed himself to be the big nemesis. And then he, he, we knew about him, but Darth Vader was his villain and we couldn't get to the Emperor because he had to go through Darth Vader and all of his stormtroopers and stuff. So that was, that was really, really how that played out in the end. Um, a blunt force trauma nemesis is the one who's actively fighting against the party. So there's no subtlety here. There's not a mastermind who sends villains. They are leading the charge. So a lot of animated TV shows use this kind of nemesis. Skeletor from He-Man and the Master of the Universe is a typical example. They constantly engage in the PCs and they manage to escape when the situation gets too hot. Their villains don't. The villains get captured and justice is brought so the PCs feel like they're winning but that nemesis is like, I will get you again, ha ha, and then off they, they, they run. So there we are. Anyway, I, this was quite a long rambling video. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I hope it was of value to see all the different aspects and all the different facets um, of, of villains and henchmen and nem nemeses and goons and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, I really do help, hope it has helped you in some way. If it does, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and share the video uh, with GMs whom you think need some help in terms of creating their big bads. Dungeon Fog sponsors uh, a show with us every month. Uh, and they, they, they basically they have to because every month they are updating, they're releasing new content, they are, are, are just bringing out prop packs and it's always free if you are a subscriber with them now i mean just just last month we had ancient river pack and now this month because they've done a partnership with a, a kickstarter and it's a, it's a new world setting we're getting another river civilizations pack and it, it's got bananas i mean it's got bananas i love and so obviously i mean i'm mean excited about bananas right anyway use the code great gm to get a discount on your next subscription to dungeon fog i mean this is this is this is really worth it folks they're constantly improving and updating i don't do maps on anything else because i everything i could need is in dungeon fog so that's my advice you will never never need another map making piece of software ever again i mean if you make maps this is for you if you don't make maps it's for you and i've just finished recording uh, i don't know how many tutorial videos on dungeon fog to help make it easier to use you can find that on their website www.dungeonfog.com anyway until next time i wish you and yours the very happiest of playing